Now, the purpose of tonight is to just give all of you, and especially those who are sort of new to triathlon, just a bit of a heads up of, I guess, some of the injuries, um, a bit of a snapshot of triathlon from a physio perspective as well, I guess, um, and just some advice about basic equipment and things like that, um, things that we picked up on and treated by you guys. So, if you've got any questions for going, um, don't hesitate to put your hand up. We'll give away a couple of uh, massage vouchers as well without my therapist overnight, so you can keep it script. Alright, so to begin with, yeah, talking a bit on body maintenance and a bit on equipment. Can anyone, this is for one of the vouchers, can anyone tell me where they think most injuries occur in triathlon? In terms of what, what, uh, what leg of the race? Left leg. <laughs> <laughs> what about Brad? Running, that's correct. Actually, it's 65% of injuries in triathlons are occurring during running. Uh, there's been quite a lot of studies done of British triathletes and also of the triathletes over in Perth and WA. Um, and what they've found is that 65% are occurring in running, 16 are in the cycling, and then 11 in the swimming. A lot of studies have actually shown less than 11% in swimming, so as low as 2 and 3 in some. So it's, it's not really a, something you need to be too worried about unless you're getting pain. <laughs> just swimming. The, can anyone tell me also where they think most of the injuries are occurring? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is true to a certain extent. Um, I've added in 77% of the lower limb down the bottom there because this one is from about the late 90s, this study, and quite a bit's changed since then. So, in general, it's lower limb. Knees now the, the highest percentage of, of injuries uh, in any triathletes. So be aware of that. There's, there's a lot less going on up around sort of upper limb, neck, and shoulders. So, given that, um, let's talk about stretching. So, in the evidence, in all the literature, there's not a lot of great evidence to support the fact that stretching out your muscles will reduce your chances of tearing muscles. It's a bit of a myth. Um, there's, there's evidence to suggest that it will improve your muscle power and your contractility. So if you think about muscles, your muscle fibres are kind of like this. They can be shortened when you contract it, or they can be lengthened. So if you're already starting in a shortened position, you've only got so much to work with. Whereas if you're already starting in a stretched out position, you've got a further range to work in. So therefore you're going to be generating more power. Um, so that is important. So stretching will help with that. Stretching will also help with biomechanics. So if you've got a tight muscle, let's say the inside part of your calf is tight, that can be throwing out your biomechanics at your ankle, which can then cause other problems like overloading of tendons. Um, so at the end of the day, stretching can reduce your load in your tendons because there's more movement able to occur at that muscle before it gets transferred down into your joints. Now, those of you that are at the lawn camp and I have yeah, on for ages about tendinopathies will remember that you want to reduce load to stop tendinopathies developing which is the number one problem that triathletes get, tendinopathies and also muscle problems, so strains, tears. So, when you're stretching, again, there's lots of different ways you can do it. Everyone will tell you something different. Um, most of the evidence these days is saying that you want to do a static stretch, so something where if you're looking at a calf stretch, for instance, you'd be holding it steady and not sort of bouncing on it. Uh, things like hammies, not necessarily doing all the swinging of hammies. Um, trying to sustain a hamstring stretch in a still position. You're looking typically around three lots of 30 second holds for each stretch for each leg or arm or whatever body part you're doing. So keep that in mind when you're doing things and allow time to do that um, before and afterwards as well. As far as stretches of the lower limb in particular, because again remember that's where most of your injuries are going to occur if you're going to get them. Um, the ones I'd be definitely keeping an eye on throughout the season would be hip flexors. Most of you guys that are coming to see me have got super, super tight hip flexors because you're spending ages on the bike and everything's working really hard and you never actually go and stretch them out again. So, can someone come up and, one of, someone who's not a patient, can someone show me how to do a proper hip flexor stretch? Does anyone know? Think they know? Yeah, <laughs> get up and give me a voucher, alright? Alright? Yeah, that's good. 
give you a voucher for being brave anyway. Um, So you need to be tough on your bum under, don't have your bum poked out. Before you do that, you need to make sure that the leg that you're stretching, so in this case, sorry, what's your name? Bernadette. Bernadette. So Bernadette's right leg there is leaning forwards quite a bit from a knee to a hip. You can see that? What you want to do is bring it back so that you're flat between your trunk and your hip. So it's a bit like, I'll show you what's there. So you want to be nice and flat between the trunk and hip. Tuck your toes in that position and then leave the voice just a little bit into it. The moment your leg, your thigh, starts going really far forwards, all that's happening is you're arching in your back, and all the movement's coming there, not in your hip flexor. So bring everything back, get it tight, and then lean into it. Another good tip for you guys, because you're really prone to the tele problems, is, thank you for that, um, <laughs> is you want to chuck a towel or a jumper down on the ground first, and kneel onto that, and get it so that it's lining up with your shin. So it's sort of resting across there with that leg that's down. That way you're not compressing your kneecap onto the ground and you're causing some rotation there. Your calf, you want to be doing two sorts of stretches for your calf. So you've got your standard push the wall over, legs straight back behind you. Everyone's done that at some point in their lives. The other one you want to be doing is a knee to wall stretch. Where I'll show you in a second, but you've got to basically touch your knee to the wall, bending your bending in the knee, and get your foot as far back from the wall as possible. You're not allowed to let your heel come off the ground though, so. Looks a bit like this. So that's your wall there. Heel goes down, knee touches to the wall, and find that point, bring your foot back as far as far as you can, and you can just keep your wall heel down with your maximum stretch. The reason for that is you've got three muscles in your calf, and you need to make sure you're stretching two of them. You won't stretch that much if you've got a straight knee. <coughs> Does everyone follow that? Yes. When you're doing those kind of stretches and also trying to stretch your Achilles by getting up against the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it acceptable <coughs> to twist to get extra stretch? Look, the, I mean, it doesn't matter too much. The most important thing is that you keep your foot straight. If you let it turn out, then you're usually stretching half of that muscle. So keep your foot in a line. Um, yeah. Next up, quads. Stretch your quads on your tummy. Everyone that stretches them standing up is getting too much movement at their hip. So. If you think about it, when you're, when you're doing that, it's very easy to let your hip bend and your knee come forwards. So pull it back, get it down, but do it on your tummy. And then all you have to worry about is not letting your pelvis come up off the ground. So don't let it rotate up. Yeah? Uh, glutes. There's two glute stretches I'd be recommending you do, just on a, as a sort of routine basis for maintenance throughout the season. The first is where you line your back and cross your leg over. Bottom leg up, I'll show you in a second. And the second one is where you're pulling your knee up to your chest and then across, sweep it across your body to the opposite shoulder. So, I don't know if you guys can see that. Basically, that's the first one. Okay, cross it over, grab on your bottom leg, pull that up to your chest, relax your head back there when you're doing it, though. And the second one is just knee up and then sweep it across until you feel that through the body. All right. What difference does it make if with that first one? I just think it's going to be going to be so there's no need to do that. It's more comfortable than other is a tricky one, um, and certainly a few of you have been working on ways to stretch your hammies where you're not just cheating with the movement in your back. I see heaps of people that will stick their leg up on a fence post about this high and think they're getting a really good hammy stretch. No one is that flexible. None of you will be that flexible. <laughs> but what you want to do, pick something in low, so a chair, a step, anything like that. Lean into the stretch and then think, poke your bum out as much as you can. So, you, oh, you can do it off the ground. So, oh yeah. so, if you like that, the moment your leg goes higher, the center leg's up there, all the movement is coming through my lower back and I'm just curling my pelvis around and under. Whereas if you're down here and you're poking your bum out, then you actually feel a lot more stretch through that hammy itself. Okay. Stretch goes off, stretch goes on. So, a lot of these stretches are related to the pelvic position. Yep. You can tell I see Charlie. Yeah, that's what I said a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's right. I've got copyright on that one. <laughs> Alright, as far as warming up, um, 
there is, whilst there's no, we're not really good evidence out there to suggest muscle tears are reduced by stretching, there is good evidence to suggest that a good warm up will reduce your chance of a muscle tear in events. So, make sure you do a good warm up. Typically, the literature states that you need to be doing more than a 15 minute warm up minimum. So, anything less than 15 minutes and your chance of injury increases dramatically. So, um, use the bikes. Um, the trial runs guys have always got the bikes there uh, for pre-races, so you jump on the bikes for a bit. And finally, don't forget your arms. You're about to jump in and do a swim, yet a lot of you will only go from just jog as a warm-up. So make sure you do a bit of stuff to warm your arms up as well. What's the maximum amount of time you can leave between your warm-up and your race? Oh, look, it's, I mean, the idea of a warm-up is to improve the circulation and bring blood into the muscles, which will then increase how athletic stents or how stretchy they are. So generally, if you're either, if it's a cold day, don't leave it too long, all right? I'd be, given that you, you know, you're gonna have to wait for the race to actually start, you wanna be warming up and then basically going and assembling straight away. So try not to leave it too long. Uh, rolling, who's got a roller, hands up? Who doesn't have a roller, hands up? Keep your hand up if you've been here and this is not your first time here in trial lights. Okay, so most of you, all right, get a roller. It's pretty simple. There's a, there's a good saying, if in doubt, roll it out. It's, um, it's pretty effective. The thing that I'd be doing mostly is your ITB, because that's where a lot of you are going to tighten up, especially on the bike. So, does anyone know, not know what the ITB is? Don't be afraid. Okay, so the ITB, you need to do your bend. It's basically a band of tissue that runs down the side of your leg. So it goes from that bony bit on the outside of your hip, about there. It goes down and crosses over the knee joint. Who can tell me why you don't want to cross the knee joint when you're rolling it? You answer too many. Anyone else? Someone give me an answer. My patient should know this. Yep. Oh, the most important thing is, I mean, you've heard of ITB friction syndrome? which is basically where that ITB gets really, really tight and where it crosses over the knee joint and starts rubbing on the top of your bone there. Uh, you don't want to cause unnecessary compression over that area. So if you start rolling right across the knee joint every time, you can actually start to develop that problem without even having it in the first place. So when you're rolling, the top and bottom third has a slightly different type of collagen in it where it's more responsive to soft tissue work, it's more pliable. So make sure you're focusing on those sections. So if you divide the leg up again from bony bit on top of hip down to knee joint and top and bottom third especially. If you're new to rolling, start off on those areas and then work up to doing the middle bit. And then you'll probably tolerate it a bit better as well. <laughs> it usually takes a good 10 days to two weeks before it starts becoming more comfortable. So stick with it. Um, can someone come and show me how to use a roller? Properly, got a roller here. Anyone? Patty, you know how to use a roller up again? Oh yeah, look, I'd be trying to roll out, especially before races would be good, because uh, if you're tight, that's when you start developing problems if you then run whilst you're tight, uh, and certainly afterwards as well. It's something that I would be doing today, especially if you drag your position and see. So. You've got to do it with the key. Yeah, I mean, you've got to be doing a good five minutes on each side, and um, you can be five minutes on each side at least, every day, definitely, as a minimum. For those that want camp, you know how to use a roller. <laughs> there are more ones which would be easier to use, and you can do other stuff on the line, of course, you have to pet stretches and things, so if you're going to buy one, it's probably worth buying one anyway. Um, but if all you're doing is ITV, you're going to be able to So, if we watch Patty do this, so you bring your left leg up and over in the front. Yeah, bend your knee pretty front of the ground there. So, get that one up there. So, while he's in that position, between his left leg, the other one's bent up and over, and his right arm and his left arm, he can put that on the ground as well. He can alter how much weight he's going through that roller. So, therefore, you can tolerate it a bit easier because you can gradually lean more and more into it. Um, when you get better at it, you can move it along you can chuck that left leg on top of the right leg. Do that now, buddy? Yeah. So it just increases the weight. It's not true. Really, it's a bit soft, but that's right. And you have to wear protection. <laughs>